Tonight, Hurricane Michael is gaining strength in the Gulf of Mexico. States of emergency have been issued in Florida and Alabama. Mandatory evacuations also were ordered. The outer bands of the storm have already been felt in Mexico and Florida. Jeff, could there possibly be effects felt here in Hampton Roads? Yeah, there's no doubt we're going to get at least some of the moisture from the storm and they'll still have some pretty gusty winds as it moves over us. Luckily, it's making landfall, you know, over a thousand, probably, I don't know, 1500 miles away from us. So the more it's over land, the more it weakens right now, even starting to get a little bit of a hint of an eye. Certainly that center of circulation showing through right there. Category one storm at this point with top winds of 90 gusting to 115 miles per hour going to approach some sometime during the day on Wednesday, be just offshore of the Florida Panhandle, work its way onshore, and look how quickly it go, literally halves its speed from Wednesday morning to just inland, southeast uh, or southwest, excuse me, areas of Georgia already losing about half of its wind speed by Wednesday morning. After that, typically a storm would lose another half of its wind speed over the next 12 to 24 hours. So it should be down to about 30. That's a typical case. This is going to be a little bit atypical in that as it comes up here, it'll sort of hold its own or weaken a little bit, we believe. But because it's still got part of its circulation over water and because a cold front is absorbing it, it's going to turn into sort of a hybrid system and maintain at least some of its strength. And then when it gets back out over the open water and shoots rapidly to the northeast, it will intensify once again. But until that happens, again, we're going to deal with some gusty conditions. In terms of the impacts, rainfall, we'll probably have several inches, but overall that's relatively minor effects. Tidal flooding, relatively minor. Tornado, depends on the exact path, but minor to maybe moderate impacts. And then wind damage as well. It'll depend on exactly whether we get 40 mile per hour gusts or 60, a little bit of a difference in the kinds of effects that you have around here. So we'll narrow that down over the next several days, but I'll have a lot more coming up. Jeff, thanks. Tonight, a woman is in the hospital after a car hit her in Portsmouth. It happened just before 6 tonight on George Washington Highway near Greenwood Drive. Police said the woman has a serious head injury. It's not believed that speed or alcohol played a role, but police still are investigating. Finally, more answers for the family of Bellamy Gamboa. She's the Virginia Beach mother who was murdered by her ex-boyfriend in July. Her body was never found. However, the latest news about the case is giving the family hope for justice. Reporter Chenu Her talked to Bellamy's sister and has more. Yeah, Regina, the case against her ex-boyfriend Lamont Johnson, who is also the father of her two children, is moving forward. Now, even without the body, it's still possible he gets convicted following a trial. An attorney tells me it's happened before in previous cases. Months after Bellamy Gamboa's ex-boyfriend Lamont Johnson admitted to killing her, prosecutors are expected to bring him to trial on murder charges, even though her body was never found. Family, we were all pretty terrified. We don't know. This is not like something that we deal with every day. Police spent $50,000 unsuccessfully trying to find her body in a landfill. I was terrified that there may not even be a trial because or a case because we didn't have with they don't have Bellamy's body. But attorney Ed Booth says legally it's clear a trial can happen. I mean the bottom line is the law is clear. It can absolutely happen where you can prosecute someone for murder without a body. In Bellamy's case, Cherie says the family feels somewhat confident about the trial because Johnson confessed to the murder as shown in court documents. He also admitted to moving her body to Chesapeake after she was dead. We're just standing on that leg right now, no, just assuming that's why it's going to trial because he confessed to killing her. But we don't know what his public defender is advising him to say or do or what, you know, what they're trying to do with his confession. You know, if you have a confession, uh, you know, that's that's a far different landscape in terms of proof than if you were trying to prove uh, a murder occurred uh, and you have a defendant who's not helping in that process. With the case moving forward, Cherie says the family will try their best to support each other, although it won't be easy. I don't know. It's still mixed feelings because we'll never be able to see her again. Cherie says their family is working with delegate Kelly Fowler to hopefully dedicate a day to Bellamy, not only to share her story, but also spread awareness about domestic violence. Chinuhart, 13 News Now.
Two people shot tonight in Newport News. Officers were called to Teardrop Lane just before 8. This is off Warwick Boulevard in Denby. They find a 19-year-old there shot. His injuries are said to be life-threatening. A 39-year-old woman also was shot. No word on her condition. Investigators say the two victims knew each other. Only on 13 News Now, a little girl from Moyoc facing a frightening ordeal. She has an inoperable brain tumor. Her future uncertain. But she isn't alone. Megan Parrier has the story. Savannah Kretzer thought she had a stomach bug. The family dog, Chloe, stayed by her side. Nine month old golden retriever that just would not get off of her. Back and forth from the couch to the bathroom, back to the couch. But things got worse and Jacqueline Kretzer took her daughter Savannah to CHKD. Came to rule, to rule out anything more dangerous than what we thought it could be. And it didn't go as we planned. They stayed for 10 days. And unfortunately found out that through the imaging that there was a mass in Savannah's brain. The news meant physical therapy, tests, and some neurological damage, all adding up to big bills. So the community got to work. Kids, parents, teachers, friends, the whole, the whole little town of Moyak just kind of really spending the time and the energy to break dollars down into coins. Moyak Elementary raised $5,000 from Penny Wars. My friends, um, they helped me through tough things. Soon, Jacqueline's friends reached out to help. Before Savannah went back to school, we went to have a haircut, and Tabitha is an amazing stylist, so the fact that she came forward, she really went and reached to a different level. The Hair to Die For Salon is giving free cuts on Tuesdays, all to raise money for Savannah. She's radiant. Um, you can't help but instantly fall in love with Savannah. Instead of payment, Tabitha just asks that you donate to Savannah's GoFundMe page. Tabitha hopes more people come in for a cut. <laughs> to trim down Savannah's health costs. If you can get a haircut and donate to a little girl who is in medical need, why not? We still have a long road to go recovery-wise and financially, um, but we'll get there one step or another. And today, Savannah's feeling pretty lucky. I thought I was somebody that was really lucky. If you're someone who is in the market for a haircut and want to help out, the salon is offering cuts tomorrow for free and accepting donations. This is going to be going on each Tuesday for the rest of October. Live in the studio, I'm Megan Perrier, 13 News Now. Brett Kavanaugh is now Associate Justice Kavanaugh. All eyes will be on how he handles the job on the high court after a bruising fight to get there. One signal, as he promised during his confirmation hearings, he has hired four clerks, all of them female. ABC's Megan Hughes has more. I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, be solemnly swear. With his confirmation fight behind him, Brett Kavanaugh will begin hearing cases on the Supreme Court tomorrow. And tonight, he's being celebrated at the White House. We're gathered together this evening for a truly momentous occasion. Every American can be assured that I'll be an independent and impartial justice, devoted to equal justice under law. Kavanaugh was confirmed Saturday by a 50 to 48 Senate vote, the smallest Senate margin in 137 years. There were protests before and even after his confirmation. We were literally under uh, assault. Uh, uh, these uh, demonstrators, I, I sure some of them were well-meaning citizens, but many of them were obviously trained they, to get in our faces. The nomination was rocked by sexual misconduct allegations against Kavanaugh from high school and college. Kavanaugh strongly and categorically denied all accusations of sexual misconduct. He's going to be on the Supreme Court with a huge taint and a big asterisk after his name. And some Democrats say the battle isn't over, hinting they could look at impeaching Kavanaugh if they take over Congress. On behalf of our nation, I want to apologize to Brett and the entire Kavanaugh family. You, sir, under historic scrutiny, were proven innocent. Thank you. Despite the polarizing confirmation fight, the justices made a show of solidarity with two liberals, Elena Kagan and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and conservatives Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito attending the swearing-in ceremony Saturday. Megan Hughes, ABC News, Washington. 
Justice Kavanaugh will get right to work. Here's a look at his first cases on the Supreme Court. Tomorrow will feature a 1984 federal law that has been before the Supreme Court often. It's the Armed Career Criminal Act. The law sets a 15-year minimum sentence if the offender has three prior serious or violent felony convictions. The debate has been over the definition of a serious or violent crime. Then on Wednesday, the justices will consider another question they've heard before. It's the issue which undocumented immigrants can be detained during during deportation proceedings. Also on Wednesday, the court will hear a case filed by Navy sailors who want to recover damages for injuries caused by asbestos exposure.